how is it recommended that a devotee in this current age prepare for their own inevitable death? That's a good question. Getting down to practical matters here. Um, the glory of devotional service is that if you are fully engaged in Krishna consciousness, at every moment you're preparing. At every moment you're preparing. For example, if we're always glorifying Krishna, if we're always preaching, then at every moment we're doing what, Krishna, what Bhishma is doing. He's giving up all his discussion of uh, social science and political science and ethics and all that, and he's just going to glorify Krishna. So the best preparation is to always be talking about Krishna, to always be glorifying Krishna. And then you're already in the spiritual world. Uh, or always serving Krishna, even if always, so whatever we do, that's what Krishna said, Jet Karoshi, whatever you do, Tat uh make that Madarpanam, an offering to me. So if, and, and Prabhupada constantly taught this, that keep yourself in Krishna consciousness, keep yourself engaged. So if at every moment we're talking about Krishna, we are... Uh, we're preaching to others about Krishna. We're we're we're, we're reading books, or we're serving. Because if you, if whatever you're doing, raising children, cooking, uh, swimming, because you know your body needs a little exercise. Prabhupada was happy when the devotees were swimming in the beach. Uh, well, actually swimming in the water, not actually in the sand. <laughs> that would be a little crazy even for devotees, you know, <laughs> swimming on the beach, but. He was at the beach, well, at Stimson Beach, north of San Francisco, uh, and 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 was sat on the shore, and he was enjoying because the devotees were faithfully engaged, and even in their recreation, I know in Mayapur, uh, devotees always take pleasure swimming in the Jamuna, and in uh, the old days in in Brindavan, we used to swim the Jamuna when it was anyway. So, because why are we doing that? If we're doing it in Krishna consciousness, first of all, to get the mercy of the great goddess Ganga or, or, or Jamuna. And if we're doing it just to relax and get exercise so that we can fix our mind in Krishna or we're fixing our mind in Krishna while we're bathing. So, yes, keep yourself in Krishna consciousness. And then whenever Krishna takes you, you will be ready. So, uh, Bhishma had unmoving faith in Krishna and the process. How can sincere devotees deal with temporary moments of lack of faith? Many go through it in silence, afraid to be judged or labeled as not being a, quote, good devotee, unquote. Oh, come on, the Hare Krishna movement. Who would ever judge anyone else? <laughs> Who would ever label anyone else? Are you, are you sure you're talking about the Hare Krishna movement? <laughs> Um, it's a good question. If we, well, I mean, I guess the simple answer is we have to be able to, or learn to establish really good friendship. And you may not want to talk, tell others, you know, every little horrible detail of your life, but there are ways to talk about your problems in a way that does not expose you to um, unwanted consequences, undesired consequences. Or, I mean, so the ability to form good friendship, first of all, it requires that you have some judgment because some people, to be honest, are not the right people to make your intimate friends because they uh, may not keep your confidence or they may not reciprocate. They may not be good friends to you. So if we are too needy, that's the problem of being too needy that we, um, we may get into intimate relationships, either of the, you know, sexual kind or, or even romantic kind, or even just friendship, even just intimate friendship. If we are too needy, there's the danger of forming inappropriate intimate connections with other people of whatever kind. 
And so uh, one has to be strong enough. Not We should not expose ourselves. We should not expose ourselves or reveal ourselves to people who have not earned that confidence. You know, it's just one of the things about the modern insane world that most just leaves me incredulous, like I can't believe it, is that people that say go on television and they just tell all the problems of their life or, or on uh, social media like Facebook. I mean, when I heard that people just post their problems on Facebook or other media, I was like, you know, the sound you would have heard if you were near me would be my jaw hitting the ground. You know, I just, I could, I mean, I still find it kind of unbelievable. I grew up in a very different culture. I grew up in a very different culture. People had some dignity. You know, they had some, I mean, most people, I mean, I, I don't think I ever knew anyone when I was growing up or that would just, or even to this day, if I see like old friends from school or whatever, or my brothers, it's just, people just didn't do that. So um, one thing is being intelligent enough and, and self-controlled enough not to expose yourself, not to speak about very intimate things to people who have not earned, earned your trust. And let's say you find yourself in a situation uh, where you just, for whatever reason, don't have anyone to talk to, maybe because, you know, the electricity went down, all your social media is not working, your, you know, your uh, smartphone battery is dead or something. And so you actually can't communicate with anyone. The, the, the best way to reveal your mind, which actually is does not depend on any type of material technology is called japa because krishna is present in his name krishna is there in his name and it's funny because you know one of the first spiritual practices that some people give up or fail at japa it's like you know many devotees well I, i'm not chanting 16 rounds but i, I am eating prasadam Somehow or other, I'm, you know, I'm very faithful, and so I still go to feasts. So people continue to eat prasadam. They may like kirtan, or you know, they like a good kirtan. But japa is one of the first things that people, that some devotees sort of stop doing, or they reduce. And that's ironic and unfortunate, because japa is precisely your quality private time with God. You can always reveal your mind to Krishna. Actually, you don't even have to because he already knows. So it's like Santa Claus. He knows when you've been naughty. He knows when you've been nice. So there is someone who actually already knows, like whatever you want to reveal, somebody already knows it. And that's Krishna. And that one person that already knows it is the only person in the universe that actually understands you perfectly, that has the power to change your life. I mean, we can always help each other, but in terms of someone really having the power to change your life, that's Krishna. Someone has the power to bring you any kind of support or help you need, any resources you need, that's Krishna. And so to either not chant Japa or to chant it inattentively is a disaster. Because Krishna is in charge of everything. He, he's the one person who understands you perfectly. He's the one person who has the power to fix anything in your life immediately. And he's always there. And he actually likes you. I mean, that's amazing. You know, despite everything, Krishna actually likes us. So, um, so therefore, japa is our intimate quality time with Krishna. Japa is the best time in your life to fix your personal problems. Whether they are emotional or whatever. Almost all of our problems are ultimately problem psychological because if you understand you're an eternal, invulnerable, blissful soul, even though 
there are inevitable bodily problems in this world if we really, really fully understood ourselves, we wouldn't really have serious problems. Not that we, you know, we would be completely indifferent to the world or anything or to our own state, but so Japa, no one can say, I can't reveal my mind to anyone because what about Krishna? Isn't, isn't Krishna someone? So I think uh, we really need to uh, understand the importance of Japa. So Krishna Priya, one of my first disciples. We heard how Bhishma realized that the time was coming for him to leave, so he fixed his mind only on Krishna. And so in our own lives, we feel as we get older, we are distracted in so many ways. How can we really focus our mind and not be distracted by the temporary things in this world? Well, Prabhupada always said, how do you put it? Uh, arrange your life. Arrange your life so that you can always think of Krishna. So it's our responsibility to organize our lives in such a way that we can think of Krishna. One thing we can do is, for example, live in a place where we have good association or even in that place, avoid bad association uh, and so on and so forth. Or we can take our job as seriously. So we have the responsibility uh, to arrange our life, organize our life in such a way that we can always think of Krishna. Prabhupada has given us all the tools we need, all the resources we need, Prabhupada has given us. Now it's just a question of, it's just like I remember there's a, uh, this mouthwash called Listerine in America. Well, they sell another place, you know, Listerine. And so they did a marketing study and they, and what they found was, cause their sales were going down. They, they found that, uh, everyone bought Listerine cause it was like one of those old products, like everyone, but they put it in what they call the medicine cabinet. They put it in the bed and they'd never use it, but everyone had it, but no one used it. So I remember they had this huge ad campaign on primetime television where, where the, the conclusion of all the ads was, it's in your medicine cabinet, use it. <laughs> and so I'm thinking, <laughs> Joppa is like that, you know, it's in your closet, use it. Take your Joppa out of the closet. And, and, and not only chant Joppa, but chant good Joppa. When you chant Japa, you should be thinking, because it's true, that your life depends on it. Your life depends on the quality of your Japa. It's just like, what if, for example, you know, let's say, God forbid, someone was being held captive by these violent terrorists, and they said, well, we will let you go only if you for 10 minutes, you chant good job. <laughs> I mean, that's very unlikely since I can't imagine terrorists doing it. Maybe they would say chant Allah or something, Allah Akbar. <laughs> but the point is our life depends on our japa. Our life depends on the quality of our japa. Are we going to lead this world in, in, in panic, in absolute terror, you know, in, 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 in traumatic fear or confusion? Or are we going to leave this world like ladies and gentlemen? Like, bye-bye, material world. It was, uh, you know, we had our moments. And then you very happily leave. It's, it's described, this very inspiring story of, um, oh my God, what's the name of that sage who gave up his body to Indra? The Dichi. Mooney, I mean, talk about being a generous donor, like they have all these Sankirtan stories. Yeah, I met this guy or I met this lady and then she just gave me, you know, $200. And so I gave her a set of books. The demigod, the devas went to Didichi and they asked him, could you donate your body? You know, Sankirtan devotees say, could you give a little more? Could you give $10? Could you give 20? So they, the devas said to Didichi, uh, hi, uh, could you donate your body? 
because they needed the DG Muni's body. Indra needed it to make a thunderbolt to kill Vritra. And so Dadichi said, sure, sure, I'll donate that. But what's interesting is if you read that section of the Bhagavatam, Dadichi, because he was a great yogi, he gave up his body, but he actually didn't lose consciousness. He hardly even noticed it. He hardly even noticed it. It's like, let's say there's a, a friend of yours in your house and, and, uh, and they ask you, do you mind if I take an apple? I'm a little hungry. And you say, sure, you can take an apple. And so you don't even pay attention. I mean, you know, the friend takes it, leaves, and then you notice, oh, yeah, I have one less apple in the kitchen. So Dadichi Muni, he just gave up his body. He did not lose consciousness. So if you want to leave this world with your eyes open, your spiritual eyes, and fully conscious, if you want to not have a death experience, if you want to not die, you don't die. You just take off some clothes, but you actually do not experience death, then uh, then you need to be very, very serious about chanting Krishna's names. Because in this age, there is no other way. Kalo nastyeva 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 gatiranyata. So we have the option, every one of us, doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter your gender or your age or, you know, what your position is in the Hare Krishna movement, all that is irrelevant. All that matters is if you, the soul, decide seriously that I'm going to be Krishna conscious, Krishna's in his name, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, there's no other way in this age, and you chant Krishna's holy names with all your heart, with all your heart, not only when you're rocking out in a good kirtan with the drums and the music, and you're into the music. I mean, that's nice and it's, it's all good. It's all great. But um, the java, kirtan is wonderful. And, and of course, you know, it's, that's what we do in this age. We chant kirtan. But when you do japa, there's no, it's like, it's like, eating food with no salt or spices, you know? There, there's no music, there are no drums, there's no, uh, you know, someone with a beautiful voice singing. It's, you're just stuck with Krishna. I mean, it's just the holy name. It's just Harinama. There's nothing else there, no spices. And so can you find pleasure in your relationship with Krishna? Can you find beauty in Krishna through his name, even when it's just the name and nothing else? And so that's why I always say, I think Japa is really, uh, it's the best measure of our spiritual advancement. And it's, it's the most powerful process, which is why Prabhupada in the initiation vow, he said, you have to promise not to do four things, the four things that you cannot do, and there's only one thing that Prabhupada asked you to do to be initiated, and that is japa. So I think we need a japa revolution in ISKCON. 